Hey there, this is Uncle from TacticalGamer.com and this is another Arma 3 Mission Editor tutorial. Uh, this one I'm going to go over a couple of the uh, new modules very quickly. Uh, one of uh, a support module for adding artillery and a module for adding respawn points and a menu option for choosing from different respawn points. Uh, all within the editor. Um, there's only one slight modification you need to do sort of in the description.ext file. So, first of all, I've used my 14 player, one squad template uh, to start off this mission. I've just added a couple of vehicles over here. Uh, what we're going to do is choose the module tool, plop down a multiplayer module for respawn. All I need to do over here is name the respawn point, what's going to show up on the map and in the menu, and it's going to be beach house. It's going to be an infantry type respawn point. It's going to be available to Blue 4, and it's only going to be shown to anybody on the side of Blue 4. Now I just simply place that where I want that respawn point to be, and let's create another one. Another multiplayer respawn position. Call this Beach Road. Same deal, and ungroup modules when you place them. Alright, now there's one more thing we need to do in the description.ext like I was saying. Let's jump over to that. Okay, now I'm in uh, the uh, Notepad++. I've opened up my description.ext. Now, it's over here in multiplayer. Let's say if I go to my documents, Armor 3, other profiles, into my player name, multiplayer missions, and I save this as a module test. And so I've copied my templates already over into here and I've started editing this description.ext file. I've changed respawn from our normal default none to respawn at base. I put a timer on the respawn. You have to wait at least 20 seconds. This is just for the purpose of demonstration. Normally at TG uh, we're using like a five minute uh, respawn timer so that there's a, a consequence to getting shot. You have to wait around for five minutes before you uh, can get back into the game. So I would normally have that 300 seconds, but for this purpose it's only 20. And the new respawn templates gives us an uh, option of having a couple of menu options pop up while you're uh, waiting for respawn. You can choose, with when you include this menu position, you can choose where you want to respawn. And with this menu inventory option, you can choose uh, what you want to respawn with. So in the menu inventory, all you need is this other part down here from, let me maximize that, so that you have uh, inside the class inventory section in here, you have different classes that you can choose from, and uh, I simply copied all this West 1, I put it down here as West 3, and just took away the rifle, it's the only thing that they're missing, so that, uh, and just changed the name to None, where this one is called the Light Loadout. So we'll have two different loadouts that we can choose from when we do our respawn. All right, so those are the three lines you need. Uh, and if it, the optional menu inventory, you can just delete that right here and it won't even use this uh, if you don't want to bother with all that messing around with loadouts. So I save that file and we go back. Okay, so back in the editor, our respawn really should be set up. I'm just gonna save the file and give it a quick preview. Okay, on the map, I can see I got two respawn points now. I press escape and the respawn option is now available. And boom, I have the ability to select a respawn point. I also have a second screen to choose between a loadout of light or a loadout of none with no rifle. So I can choose the respawn at the beach road and Grid hit zero respawn. Six zero zero five six. 
Okay, so that's how the uh, respawn works. Now, let's quickly add another module here. The vehicle respawn works uh, just as uh, easily, really. I'm going to put down a multiplayer vehicle respawn point. Now, here, there's a few more things to configure. Delay in seconds that the vehicle will respawn. Let's give it a five second. Desert delay, let's give that uh, just a 15 second respawn timer. So as soon as the vehicle's been deserted for, fi deserted for 15 seconds, it will uh, respawn. How many times it could respawn? Let's give it a two. Uh, there's an expression that can be used. I'm not going to bother with it. That's just uh, something that some code you can execute when the vehicle's actually respawned. Respawned. The starting position is where I'm going to have it respawn at, or you could have it respawn where it's destroyed, or at a a marker that position that you create. Okay. Okay. Delete with an explosion effect. I just want it to delete it. I don't want it to explode. Uh, there will be a notification. And. There we go. Now what I need to do is ungroup my new module and then synchronize it with the vehicles I want to be able to have respawn. On my uh, editing, I've got, as you can see, a move player in the middle of the screen. I've got an add action to be able to move my player. Uh, I do this when I'm editing and then I remove that before I uh, publish the mission. That way I can quickly just map click and move around and check out how things look. So at this point I should be able to get into this vehicle, drive it away. I think you need to move it something like a default 10 feet or something like that in order for the uh, abandoned function to start. and get out. Let's abandon this vehicle. And it should be in 15 seconds, it should go away. So it looks like default does, uh, it explodes anyway, so which is interesting for player versus player scenarios. At least you don't get a lot of smoke. It doesn't sit there and so you could choose to have it, the wreck stay there, um, and that would keep smoldering away and a lot of smoke in the sky. And Very interesting. And there's our vehicle back. So that's the vehicle respawn. There's one more quick module for supports I wanted to go over. Alright, there it is. Now I'm going to create a support module. The first thing you need is a support requester module. So we go to support, support requester, uh, and here we can define the limits of each type of support you want to be able. The close air support bombing run is not available. There's no planes in the beta yet. Uh, we've got close air support helicopter, all sorts of things here. Now. If you put an artillery limit of, let's say, 1, you will only be able to call in one request. Obviously, 10, you could call in 10 artillery requests. Minus 1 means you have unlimited. All right. So we need the requester down, and we need the requester synchronized to the player that you want to have available. So the squad leader in this case is the person I want to be able to call in support. So now he's got the support requester available to the squad leader. Now I just need to put down the modules for the actual uh, artillery. I'm going to do artillery virtual. All right, that's it. And then simply synchronize that artillery with the requester. And simply here again, I could do another module. And let's say heliport, 
helicopter transport virtual and I ungroup modules when I place them and synchronize that with the requester. Okay, you can see in the left side of my screen there, I've now got two supports available. Two. All right, so I'm going to go to press 0 and then 8 to get into the supports menu. I'm going to call for an artillery strike. Press 1 for mortar. I'm going to want uh, some HE mortars over there. Let's bring down. Requesting immediate fire support at the designated coordinates. Over. Five shells. That didn't work out the way I wanted. Requesting immediate fire support at the designated coordinates. Over. Target location received. Ordinance is inbound. Out. Rounds complete. Out. Splash. Out. Requesting immediate fire there we support go. at the designated coordinates. Over. Target location received. Ordinance is inbound. Out. So another support request for helicopter transport. Splash. Out. Rounds complete. Out. Requesting airlift at the designated coordinates. Over. Roger. Transport dispatched. Everyone in? Let's get out of here. So now I'm going to transport Standing my by. unload position. Copy. We're moving out. I just put my cursor on the map, pressed 1 to transmit our position, and now we're moving. So, there's some uh, more of the cool module features that are available. Uh, I used to have to do a lot of scripting to get this stuff to happen, and it just is so much easier now. Uh, and there you go, this is uh, Uncle from TacticalGamer.com, and uh, that was uh, Mission Tutorial, or Editor Tutorial 8. See you next time.